oftentimes we're searching for the answers when really it's the questions that we need to ask ourselves that will help guide us to the results that we want. There's seven questions in particular that have helped guide me over the past 20 years. I wanna share those seven questions with you in today's video. The first question is, what am I trying to accomplish? And for most, even myself included, this has been the hardest question to answer. Oftentimes, I think what happens to us is that we find ourselves chasing things that we want to want just to find out later, well, that's just not that important to me. That society is putting pressure on us to feel as though we should want these things when in reality, those things aren't in line with our values. And so the first thing for me, the first question to answer is to get clear on what is it that I really want? What do I find most important? What do I value? What is in alignment with my life's goal? And I think without clearly defining what we want, it virtually becomes impossible to reach that fullest potential. The second question is, why do I want what I say I want? You know, one of the interesting things is in a man's search for meaning, Viktor Frankl says, a man with a strong enough why can bear almost any how. And so what he was talking about is once you've identified your meaning, what it is that you're fighting for, the next thing is to identify why do you say you want what you say you want? What is it about that thing that is so desirable for you? Because what Viktor Frankl talks about in this amazing book is the fact that when we can get clear enough about why we're doing what it is that we're doing, we can bear the how, the tactics, the strategies, the actions, the behaviors, the things we have to do in order to get what we want. But when we're not clear on the why, we often find ourselves in a position not doing the things we know we should be doing. The other big idea is what you want versus what you must have. You see, the reality, especially in our business of real estate sales, is the fact that there is no lack of ambition. It's rare if Ever. I'll talk with a real estate agent who, you know, will reach out for coaching that they don't share their wildest, their biggest dreams, their biggest ambition. And those ambitions, although they're very exciting, we don't have a, a problem with that. What we have a problem with is people doing the work necessary to accomplish the big goal. And I think the big difference here is it's not a matter of want. It's a matter of what you must have. What are you willing to accept in your life? And that's when we talk about things like standards. And so the takeaway for me is what, what am I willing to put up with? What am I willing to accept? And what do I find unacceptable? And when I get clear on those standards, we operate to our lowest standard, not to our highest ambition. The third question is, how do those that have what I want behave? You see, oftentimes I think we forget that getting what we want is more of a process of who we must become. There's this whole idea around have to be versus be to have. And essentially what that means is this. I think a lot of people place external factors on, I have to be with this company in order for this result to happen. I have to have this certain lead platform in order to get this certain result. I have to live in this certain area to live this lifestyle. I have to look a certain way in order to attract the person that I want in my life. When the reality of it is the exact opposite. You see, the people that reach the highest level of success operate from a place of be to have. In other words, who must we become? What are the behavior? What are the character traits? How in which do I need to behave? This puts you in control to get what you want because it's action before outcomes. Question number four, what must I do to get what I want? And that is what we were just talking about in the last question. Once we've identified, okay, the people that have the thing that I say that I want, what are they doing? What do I have to do in order to get the result? Doing means 
action and you have to do the actual work in order to get the result. Now you might say, yeah, that's obvious. I understand that. However, it's rare. What we see is people that operate solely from cognitive dissonance where they say they want this big thing. They've identified their big why they want this big thing, but their actions and their behaviors would say something completely differently. And so the work is defined by the actions in which we can control, the leading indicators that impact the lagging indicators. Question number five, if you know what to do, are you doing it? There's something that Darren Hardy calls the disease of knowledge. And I love the way that he outlines this. And it is so true. You see, the real estate agents that I talk to often have this ego where it's like, well, yeah, I know all about that. Yeah, I've heard about that before. Yes, I understand I should be doing this. I should be doing that. And at the same time, they're dismissing it. They're not actually doing it. They get lost lost in what Darren calls the disease of knowledge, meaning they associate being productive with learning what to do instead of actually doing it. And there's a big, big difference between knowing what to do, knowing how to do it, and actually putting it into action. Question six, are you doing it consistently. In other words, the way I like to put to, to phrase this is if your family secretly followed you for the past 30 days, would they be proud of what they saw? Or would you be embarrassed and ashamed of what they witnessed? And I love this question because it puts the spotlight on what we're doing when no one is looking. And you see, I think we'd all agree that the people that we would call peak performers in our industry of real estate sales, the ones that are making 500,000, 700,000, seven figures and beyond, there has to be something that they're doing that the rest of us simply are not doing. And oftentimes I've had people come and shadow me for a day, for a week, and it's what people don't see that make the difference. It's all the little things. It's all the focus. It's all the habits. It's all the things that most people deem extremely difficult to do that top producers simply do. And the key idea here is that they don't do them sometimes they don't do them when they feel like doing them they do them every day no matter how they feel question seven have you mastered it in other words the thing that i think about when i talk to a lot of real estate agents is this because the disease of knowledge is so real most agents will dismiss for what they know for what they're not doing and the question i always ask them is okay if you know what to do great are you actually doing it just like we talked about and if you're doing it are you doing it consistently just like we talked about in other words if i followed you around with a stopwatch and i gave you credit for for every time you did the thing that you say to everybody, oh yeah, I do that, that may be prospecting or door knocking or open houses or converting online leads, whatever your thing is. If you're doing it consistently, the most important question is, have you mastered it? In other words, do your results prove that you've mastered it? Can we look at your bank account? Can we look at your tax return? And do those things reflect that you've actually mastered it? If we haven't, then the question I always ask is, what are we doing to improve the skills? Because often what oftentimes what happens is our ego takes over. Yeah, I'm doing it. Yes, I've I'm doing it consistently. Yes, I'm doing all those things, Brandon. I've heard all that before, but do the results prove it? And if they aren't proving it, then would it be reasonable to believe that there is an area for improvement? Are you willing to let go of your ego and surrender to the fact that maybe you don't have it all figured out?